Stu from Iceberg Stew Industries. Uh, just wanted to give you a bit of an update on some pretty cool stuff that's been going on. So firstly, I just got back from a pretty um, big mission uh, over in the Victorian high country. So I was over there doing the pre-ride for this upcoming event that we've got going in November, which as of this day, there are still tickets available for, for single cylinder advanced adventure. So I was over there doing the pre-ride, uh, rode four days, had uh, had an absolutely epic time just solo riding all around the, uh, the Victorian high country and something happened on the last day so I was uh, I was I had a bit of a noise happening in the DR and uh, you might have seen a video where I've taken the chain off and, and spun the counter shaft and it's making this like clunking noise and I was wondering yeah, this doesn't sound good. The gearbox had been whining for probably, I don't know, 25,000 Ks. So um, I was pretty sure and, you know, she was giving me the vibe that, that uh, you know, something was going on with her, with her five legs there and I think it's not good. So what happened was I came up over the top of Mount Terrible. Uh, this was on my way back and I came down this, uh, this really sick track into sort of just outside of Jamison in the Vic High Country. And I come down this track and yeah, just cruising along <clears throat> as per normal. And then I pulled out into onto the Jamison to uh, Mansfield Road and I took off up the road. You know, I wasn't gunning it, but um, yeah, probably three quarters throttle. And yeah, just changing up through the gears. Got into fourth, so I've clicked up into fourth next thing crunch like this bang happened inside the gearbox it would still engage fourth but makes a hell of a crackling crunching noise in fourth and uh fifth yeah it's not too good um first second thirds no dramas at all but uh yeah there's there's something majorly wrong in the gearbox at the moment so to give you a bit of an idea here what's going on i'll see if i can make it do it Ducks just going berserk there. See that? It just locks up. So yeah, something's hanging off in there. Still actually rides, so I rode it to, you know, a fair way back to back to Jamison. Probably, you know, 10 Ks or so back to Jamison in sort of fifth gear. Yeah, and then had to go down through the gears and yeah, it just, just hates fourth gear. So I think fourth gear is the biggest problem. Um, this bike's got, uh, got an FCR upgrade on it as well. Um, I probably won't swap that over. So I've had them both now, the FCR and the normal Makuni. And sure you get, you know, slightly more um, snappy throttle response from the, from the FCR. But what did happen to me is when I was actually um, cruising along through the high country this time, I had a uh, I had a lock on, so my throttle locked on. Now I'm not sure why it did it. I mucked around with some adjustments. It didn't do it again. But um, if you ever had it before, locked on at wide open throttle, you got to make some pretty quick decisions. Um, I just like instantly pulled that clutch in and then just turned the bike off uh, using the switch. So that was um, that was definitely a scary thing. That's for sure. So, where do we go from here? Obviously, um, you know, DR650s are, are pretty important to me and I've, uh, you know, I pretty much run my adventure bike events, you know, from the front, riding a DR650. One thing led to another and a friend of mine, completely randomly, out of the blue, sends me a message. You know, this is, uh, this is actually on our way home from Victoria. So, sends me this message, he says, Hey Stu, friend of mine is, um, is wanting to sell his DR650, do you know anyone would be interested? Well, you know, if that wasn't a sign of things that were meant to happen, I don't know what was. Ended up, after talking about this, now this friend of mine, he's an absolute legend of a dude, he is, he's a Buddhist monk. One of the other Buddhist monks at the monastery is the one that was selling this DR650. 
I've rocked over there after a few conversations online, popped over there, had a bit of a look at this bike. So talking about karma and all that type of stuff, you know, the old, the, the beautiful old girl here, you know, she's she's put in such a diehard effort. Probably done what, 80, 90, 90, I'm thinking 90 to 100,000 Ks now. And uh, you right, are you, mate? So absolute diehard effort from this girl. It's got all the fruit on it. You've probably seen that uh, that video of where I go through the most heavily modified DR650 on the planet, which is probably not, but you know it was a cool it was a cool title to a video. So yeah, this beautiful girl here, she's done me so proud over the years and and taken me to the most remote spots, and, and I've just been so happy with her. So. I went round to this Buddhist monastery where well, I ended up actually buying a DR650 off a monk at a Buddhist monastery. And here she is. So this is a 2020 DR650. Um, it's got quite a lot of modifications already to it. It's done a bit over 10,000 kilometers, 11,000 kilometers I think, which is bugger all it's absolutely immaculate doesn't look like the rims have ever had a tire changed on them you know that wasn't done in a shop the plastics are perfect um, it's actually got a, one of those big screens on it as well it's got the uh, oil cooler protector there it's got a, an Acherby tank 11,000 K's on it um, it's got uh, some, some high bend bars. It's got pro taper pillow tops on it. Looks like it's got some extenders on the mirrors. I don't use mirrors really anyway. Um, it's got a three finger warp nine clutch. Um, Carby's been done. So it's got uh, pro cycle jetting in there. Um, it's had the mods done to the, to the slide. It's just got a stock rear shock on it. Um, stock header pipe. It's also got some Acherby frame guards. It's got some Warp 9 pegs on it, which looks like they've been, like it's had a lowering kit. So lowered and, and put back. It's got um, Warp 9 guards here, which look really awesome. Uh, I've never seen them in the flesh before. And it's got, uh, got a Yoshimura slip on. So it also has the Decibel Killer as well. It's got a tail tidy, which is a Warp 9. It's got your B&B rear luggage rack, which is pretty cool. And you can see here, like the quality of the fittings in all of this is, is excellent. Looks like it's still got a decent chain, which is the original chain, still got a 525 on it. Um, yeah, another, another Warp 9 protector there, which is pretty cool. And it also comes with all the stock parts as well. Oh, and Pro Cycle Seat, which are absolutely brilliant. Highly recommend these. One of these is, you know, just taking me so many Ks, it's ridiculous. This is the new bike. I haven't got a name for it yet, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be called Buddha, for sure. <laughs> just because of the whole circumstance and, and everything that went on around getting this bike. So I'm gonna strip this, this old bike and I'm gonna put all the good stuff. So the forks have just been uh, fully redone. I've just had the rear shock redone. Um, so I'm gonna take all the fruit suspension wires off of this. I'm gonna take my MC performance rack off this cause I reckon it's better than these um, BNB ones. No offense BNB, it's just, you know, I don't run the, the Mojave. So I'll put my racks on here onto the other bike. I'll put my, my tool tube over. I'll probably leave these pegs on because those warp nines look fine. This tank, I'm going to take off and I'm going to keep for my big missions. And uh, basically everything else, so the wheels, um, the whole setup is going to be removed. And I'm going to take that engine and I'm going to rebuild it. I'll put a really good gear set in it, freshen it all up, new timing chain, new top end bring that back to a brand new motor basically and uh, I might even actually do the the bush in the starter motor so it's not a rooster anymore as well um, I'll take my um, header pipe 
which is a titanium FMF header pipe and I'll get that grafted to that Yoshi so that that Yoshi's got a beautiful note it's brand new there's no point holding on to a uh, an FMF that's done brilliantly it's done 50 60 thousand kilometers I'll put my front end on it the the shower forks the Britannia composites front end will all go over onto this one I'll definitely be keeping the, the Cycra Pro Bends um, I love Bark Buster stuff but when it comes down to it, if you're if you're going to have a stack, those Cycras are are really phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely keep them. I might use these little indicator things if I can. I'm not sure if I can, but uh, they're pretty cool. And uh, you know, I've got the Trail Tech Voyager on there. So yeah, and then this bike, I'm going to strip. It's going to go to the powder coaters. The frame's going to get fully redone. Um, it'll come back looking absolutely amazing. Not sure what colour I should do. Um, you know, should I keep it that standard sort of metallic grey or should I do something funky with it? Don't know. Maybe KDM orange just to piss off the purists. Who knows? So, and then what will happen is um, this bike here will end up with this suspension. So you'll have a brand new engine, new suspension or 11,000 kilometre old, old suspension probably have a stock tank on it as well so that'll um that'll go out to somebody that's uh that's looking for a freshed up dr650 it'll, it'll be going at a reasonable price too what i'll do is um i'll document everything down the track so that uh so that you can see exactly how i'm doing it the old girl and the new girl they're going to be merged into one super dr cannot wait yeah, so the next group of videos I'll do will be uh, basically transferring everything from this over onto the onto the new DR, taking it from there. So I hope you enjoy.